many, many years ago, a wise man say, very many things that still hold good today. Why doesn't the boy tell us where we're going? Confucius say, prize fighter never show, where he proposed a London knockout blow. You'd make up a ruddy song about it if you saw me with my head blown off. Hey, there's an idea in that too. Confucius say, each man must keep his head. All joy of living gone when you are dead. Yeah, look. Look who's following us. During this early period of his career, he said, there was no serviceman in any of the forces that I was not to portray. Sailor, airman, soldier, and always the private. The ranker. Be careful what I said there. The ranker. The irk. Never the officer. And I suppose this made sense. It was easy to cast war films with the same ranks as had existed in the war, so my father, who'd been a private, played accordingly. Richard Todd, who played officers, for example, in that great film, The Dam Busters, and also in The Yangtze Incident, which my dad was in with William Hartnell, was a captain in the 7th Parachute Battalion. Therefore, he played officers. William Hartnell, incidentally, had been a sergeant major, was playing a sergeant in the film, whereas my dad was obviously playing a rating. Incidentally, William Hartnell, the, uh, the first Doctor Who, could not forget he'd been a sergeant major. And uh, according to my dad, when they were filming Man Detained, and my dad was playing first soldier, and William Hartnell, what a surprise, the sergeant major, was inclined to treat us all as if we were still in the army, and was always checking my mode of dress to see if I'd omitted anything. He was a stickler for being correct, but couldn't catch me out as I had a great deal of experience behind me and a number of mental bruises to prove it. He meant well, though. It was just that when he donned a battle dress, he imagined he was back in the service. Quite a number of the actors objected, but I didn't mind. It rather amused me. When he played the sergeant major in the army game, a very popular TV show, he behaved in exactly the same way, always correct. Army medals, badges, stripes, boots, belt, cap and stick, always perfect. Jeffrey Sumner, if you remember him, played the commanding officer, and even they went to the pub for a drink. Bill called him sir. <laughs> There's realism for you. A good guy, Bill, and a very good actor. He too has handed in his cards and no longer contributes to equity. Keep polishing the harp, Bill. <laughs> Imagine old Bash having to walk out in this. Oh, it'll kill him. Oh, might easily get pneumonia. You have to laugh, don't you? His father had been in the war, so uh, as, a, as a territorial, okay, sorry, yes, he'd, he'd then, as he put it, taken the king's shilling, and he did a couple of, of, uh, of um, training exercises with the territorials, didn't like it very much, and never went back. But unfortunately, that meant when war broke out, he was one of the first called up. So he then went off to, uh, remember he trained in an oast house. In fact, this is in his, his book, all of this information, the, the first book he wrote, which was called For You the War is Over, which was about him being, uh, um, his, his, his exploits um, in a prison of war camp where they, where they all ended up after they'd been captured at Calais and marched across, um, which was, uh, there was uh, un unbelievably appalling conditions, but it actually sort of set up his acting career because once they were in these, in the, the camps, uh, they just put on show after show after show, which they'd write lots of the sketches as well. He had a good, a good writing flair as well, my father. 